This podcast is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Great to see everybody. Hope uh, everybody enjoyed their extended long vacation here over the course of the uh, the summer. Uh, Commissioner, thanks for the uh, the kind introduction. Uh, he mentioned that last time I got a chance to see him, we were in uh, in Omaha, and uh, as I was getting ready to to come here, uh, got a chance to see Coach Vitello uh, on the uh, the MLB draft a couple nights ago. Obviously, the All Star Game uh, was here or is here tonight, and. Uh, this is the first time I've had an opportunity to talk since uh, I got a chance to go to uh, to Omaha and watch uh, Seymour and uh, and Blake and, and Coach Vitello bring home a championship to, to Rocky Top. Um, what an unbelievable experience, opportunity to watch the game with uh, Coach Barnes, um, Danny, uh, our athletic director, uh, get a chance to be on the field and celebrate that moment. Uh, really proud of, uh, of what they did, uh, bringing home a national championship to Rocky Top, what Coach Vitello has built there, and have an opportunity to have my son uh, with me and, and really my entire family. So, uh, great night. Uh, you look at the success uh, that our brand, our logo, has had recently with baseball, but basketball uh, during the course of the winter, and you look at all the team sports uh, across the board being in uh, postseason play, uh, I think it really speaks to uh, the trajectory of our, our university, our athletic department, where it's going, but it also speaks to the leadership that we have there. Uh, so fortunate to work with uh, Dan Danny White, our athletic director, Chancellor Plowman, and President Boyd. Um, they're visionaries. Uh, they give us all the tools to go compete and uh, have created an unbelievable um, uh, experience for uh, our student athletes there on the campus. Uh, the brand is stronger than it's ever been and uh, really excited about where we're at on the football side of it, but where we're going. Uh, as I sit here today, it's hard to believe that uh, this is the fourth year, the fourth time that I've been here at SEC Media Days. And um, I, I look back, so proud of what our staff and our players have built, uh, the connection, uh, the committedness, uh, the care factor that they have for each other in, in the program, um, you know, 20 wins over, over the last couple of years, uh, top three in the league, uh, the best that it's been uh, in, uh, in 20 years on Rocky Top. As good as it's been, uh, the future is extremely bright, and uh, we're in a race to get where we need to um, extremely quickly. Uh, proud of the, the culture that we've built. I mentioned that a second ago. Um, we got unbelievable players that uh, care about the people around them uh, and uh, attack every single day uh, the right way. And uh, they do it right on the field. Uh, they do it right in the meeting room, uh, but they do it right in the classroom uh, as well and in, in our community. Um, you know, as you look at uh, uh, us academically, uh, we've shattered every record uh, over the last three years, have reset that record uh, for fall uh, term GPAs. Uh, I think we had 63 uh, individuals that were recognized by the conference uh, at the end of the, the regular season, and we're fortunate enough to have uh, some of those guys uh, here with us today. Uh, we got three really special individuals uh, that uh, uh, are with us today. Uh, they represent all this good in college football. They represent what it means to be a Vol. Uh, I take great pride in that we could have had a lot of different players uh, come with us here uh, to, to Dallas and uh, have an opportunity to speak with you. Uh, but these three guys have unique stories and um, uh, are, uh, are great ambassadors uh, for the Tennessee Volunteers. Uh, Keenan Peely <clears throat> started over 37 games in his career. Uh, unfortunately, had a season-ending injury uh, week one of last year, decided to come back for another year of college football. He loved his experience on Rocky Top and uh, is a dynamic playmaker that's poised to have an unbelievable season. Cooper Mays, uh, preseason All-American center, has started for us for four straight years. Uh, it's in his blood to be on Rocky Top. His father played there, his brother played there. Um, it's vitally important to him, and uh, he's a great uh, member of our, our squad, and uh, he's got great understanding of who we are offensively, the ability to communicate, and has great leadership skills as well. Uh, Omari Thomas, is, who is here for uh, his second time, uh, is a four-year starter for us at, at defensive tackle. 
Uh, he's kind of the mayor inside of our, our locker room. Uh, he uh, uh, is uh, our SEC representative on the NCAA Football Oversight Committee, um, but uh, is vitally important to, to who and what we are as a program. Uh, in our four years there, uh, he's been a great leader uh, every, every single year. Uh, this football team that we have when we embarked on our offseason, when we got back in, in January, it's a unique roster in that uh, we're really experienced at certain spots, in particular on the line of scrimmage, and we have some youth that, that surrounds them. The challenge has been that our young guys can't be young when we get to the fall. Uh, the leadership that we have from our veterans, uh, the um, young guys coming in, uh, buying into the culture, competing every single day, uh, this has been a great group, a great team up until this uh, part of the, the off season, the first three quarters of our off season. They've been unbelievable in, in their work habits, their competitiveness, how they've attacked every single rep every single day. And uh, I cannot wait uh, to get to training camp. Uh, I'm ready to go compete with these guys on the grass. And I know Vol Nation is excited uh, about the season that uh, we're ready to embark upon as well. Uh, it's hard to believe that training camp's uh, right around the corner, less than two weeks. Uh, we're ready to go compete. Uh, we got great renovations that are going on uh, inside of, of Neyland Stadium, one of the great venues in all of, of sports, let alone college football. Uh, our, our fan base is extremely passionate, season ticket waiting list of over 15,000 people, and uh, we'll be ready to go kick off here in a little over a month. So with that, I'm going to open it up to questions. Thank you, Coach. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll get Seth, Diego, and Nolan, please, again, give your name and affiliation uh, before your question. So, Coach, we'll start over here to our left on the second row. Hi, Coach. NickKellyAle.com. Uh, you've got another South Dakota native in the SEC with Kalen DeBoer joining. Yeah. Uh, what's that like to have a South Dakota native on the other side of the third Saturday in October rivalry? Yeah, I'm not sure anybody uh, pictured two South Dakotans being in the, in, in the SEC a few a few years ago. Uh, Kalen's somebody that I've known uh, for a long time. Uh, I was a little bit younger, um, watched him uh, as an athlete, and um, then through our, our coaching paths have uh, have crossed and stayed in uh, in contact at different times. Um, excited to have him in the league. Um, great person, great coach, and uh, you know we'll be ready for uh, for Saturday in October. Which will go down the center aisle about three quarters of the way back. Coach Billy Jones, George Plaster Show, Nashville, Tennessee. Last year you talked about as your program progresses, inches become harder to move than miles. I'm curious how you thought your team did in moving those inches. If not, what can you do to do that better this season? Yeah, uh, if I said miles, I'm not sure that miles might have been right. Uh, certainly maybe feet uh, or yards. Um, I'm really proud of, of a lot of what we did uh, last year. Uh, you know, uh, us, you know, finishing uh, New Year's Day Bowl, uh, a win, um, you know, the 20 wins over the last two years, uh, most of the Tennessee's had in, in the last two decades. Uh, at the same time, that's obviously not the standard for, uh, for where we want to get to. Um, but uh, proud of the steps that we, we took. Um, we had some setbacks on some Saturdays, but uh, that's why you get up, line up, and, and go compete every single day to, to go make, be your best. And uh, this group's been fantastic. Uh, I'm really excited about the future of, uh, of who and what we're going to be. When I took this job three years ago, um, everybody can go back and, and kind of research, um, you know, what we were embarked on uh, uh, as far as challenges and, and how we had to navigate those and uh, we're at the point now where we're almost free and clear of navigating all of those things um, our roster is um, you know the deepest that it's been by far and uh, inside of this league that's important as you, as you go through the season uh, I couldn't be more excited about going lining up with this group this uh, this fall coach will go in the section just in front of you to the right Coach, Emily Grace McWhorter from the next round. You and Coach Halsley are familiar with Oklahoma. Is there anything you're looking forward to, particularly when you travel to Norman this September? Yeah, um, first time that uh, I will have been back. Uh, it will be unique uh, for myself to, to be on the other sideline. Obviously, there's been a lot of Saturdays where I was on the, uh, the home sideline. Um, but uh, there's so many you know, great teammates, uh, friends uh, that will be there. Um, got 
great uh, respect for uh, for the university, the program. Uh, a lot of friends that are coaching uh, on the opposing sideline that day. Uh, former teammates that uh, that will be coaching on that that opposing sideline too. So uh, it'll be unique to be back there, but uh, excited to be there. Okay, we'll go back over here to our left hand side. Four rows. At Travis Brown, KBTX.com. What have you liked and not liked about the helmet communicators in your practice time with them? <clears throat> practice communication, um, uh, being able to uh, take that to, to game day, uh, quickest, most efficient, effective way to communicate with somebody uh, on the field. Uh, gives you a, a, a chance to, uh, to solve some of the problems um, in, uh, in an immediate way. Um, I think the thing that uh, the players would say is there's times where they want to turn the, the, the headset off and, and uh, eliminate some of that communication. So I think uh, as coaches, you always got to be uh, smart in, in how much information you're actually giving them. Okay, we'll go down that center aisle again in the section in front of me. Uh, Brandon Ogden, Tyler Morning Telegraph. Coach, uh, the secondaries area where y'all had a lot of turnover, brought in a lot of new guys, including <coughs> Jermaine McCoy. Just what is it you're expecting from him in that group this year? Yeah, expecting those guys to, to play at a championship level. Uh, I love the, uh, the group as far as their length, athleticism, playmaking ability, their willingness to be physical, uh, take on, disrupt blocks, tackle in, in open space. Um, their care factor, their knowledge and understanding of what we're doing, uh, how they approach, you know, their practice every single day. Um, I'm really excited about it. Um, I mentioned a little bit earlier, but this is the deepest that uh, that we've been within our roster, and uh, that affords you to have the opportunity to have great competition every single day. That's on the practice field. That's in the meeting room. Uh, but that depth becomes important as you go throughout the course of the season as well. And um, I'm looking forward to, to that group taking the, uh, a real step here this fall for us. She'll go here to the far left on the aisle. First James Hale, on OKC Sports Radio in Oklahoma City. Josh, it's great to see you again. Uh, man, you were a great James, I figured I'd hear from you at some point, man. So <laughs> good to see you. Right. right. Uh, you were a great quarterback at OU, and you've always been good with quarterbacks. Tell us about your latest quarterback, and uh, he was such a highly recruited kid. Yeah, uh, was highly recruited uh, because of his athletic traits. Um, you know, he's got the ability to, to throw the fo football sideline to sideline, vertically down the football field, extremely accurate, um, loose, quick triggered arm. Um, he's got the ability to extend and make plays with his feet. <clears throat> that's as a, a runner that's, you know, evading and, and making a play down the field. Um, the thing that I've loved about Nico is, you know, when he came into the building, uh, he wanted to earn the respect of, of his teammates. And you do that through your actions, not your words. Everybody understands how hard he works to become the best that he can at his craft. Uh, he takes great ownership in, in his skill set and developing it, uh, understanding of our offense. And um, just, uh, you know, as, as a young player um, gets his first start in the bowl game, one of the best compliments you can give to, to a quarterback is when it goes from the practice field to the game field, it slows down for him. During the course of the bowl game, it slowed down for him. For him. Thought he was in great command out there. Now there's a lot of things that he learned from that game. Uh, he's had great urgency in his preparation all offseason. I'm really excited to see his growth and development as a young quarterback throughout the course of this 24-hour journey. Okay, we'll go right in front of me, the second row, Barry. Barry Trammell with the Tulsa World. Hey, Josh, can you can you reflect on 25 years now since you came to Norman? Uh, you're going back to Norman in September. Guy that came in with you, Brent's the co head coach on the other side. Yeah. Oh, you've joined the league that you've established yourself in. Just the crazy, the crazy nature of your journey as it relates to Oklahoma. Barry, I feel like only you could have predicted that all these things would have happened uh, 25 years ago. You know, what I mean, as the grand wizard of, of uh, Oklahoma media, um, the uh, <clears throat> you know. It, Coach Leach r recruits me. Uh, Brent, I got great respect for, for Brent, um, you know, playing while he was coaching, but also being uh, beside him uh, in the staff room. Um, <clears throat> you know, I don't know that I ever forecasted they were coming into this league, uh, Oklahoma. Um, it's just uh, those are two really good brands uh, coming in. Uh, obviously, Oklahoma, my experience there. 
Uh, I think it's an exciting time to be in this league and um, really unique that uh, I'll have an opportunity to go back to, to Oklahoma. It'll be a, a completely different viewpoint <laughs> that Saturday afternoon or evening whenever the game is. Um, but um, it'll be unique for me. Uh, i got family that still lives back there. Um, a lot of friends, teammates, um, you know, still, you know, coaches that I stay in contact that, that coached me while I was there and obviously administration too. So it'll be a unique Saturday. She'll go stay in this section in front of me over here on the left aisle. Connor O'Gara, Saturday Down South. Uh, Josh, why did you ultimately not bring Nico Yamaleava here? Man, it's not about why I didn't bring Nico. It's about why uh, the three guys that I talked about earlier are here. And these are guys that are in six year plus um, that uh, uh, have unique stories and, and are great ambassadors, but great leaders inside of our, our program. And um, felt like, you know, in our track record, my track record of, of who we've brought here, um, we've brought veteran guys. And, and uh, so it's not about Nico, it's about, you know, these three guys, why we made that choice. Okay, we'll stay in that same section on the right out. Hey, Coach, Chris Phillips, SEC Unfiltered. Chris Brazel's a guy who's gotten a lot of hype this offseason, the two-lane transfer. Just talk about what makes you so excited about him and then the rest of that wide receiver group, the luxury it is to help a young quarterback with some of the talent you've got in that room. It's always a luxury as a quarterback to have guys that have the ability to separate, create bigger windows, to have length to go up and attack the football, have the skill set to defeat press at the, at the line of scrimmage, let you get the ball out of your hands, uh, not sit back there and take a bunch of hits. Uh, Chris is somebody that uh, has got a, a, lot of, a lot of talk about because of what he's done on the field. Uh, been a great teammate, but uh, he's been a dynamic playmaker uh, up until this point as we went through uh, spring ball. And um, <clears throat> his best is still coming. Uh, he's continued to grow and mature physically. Just his strength, explosiveness, uh, size to his frame, what he's done you know, since he got there in January. Really excited about him and, and looking forward to having a great training camp with him. Pitch will go over to our right-hand side, about three-quarters of the way back. Yeah, Dean, Dean Blevins, News 9, Oklahoma City. Um, Josh, back on Nico, it sounds like the learning curve that you're expecting that, to, that him to hit the ground running and uh, it's not going to be any wait till midseason to, to gain your form. Is that accurate? Well, I should certainly hope not. You know what I mean? Uh, we want him to hit the ground running. Um, <clears throat> he's a young quarterback, um, <clears throat> played really well in the bowl game. Um, he's going to continue to grow through all of his experiences here throughout the course of the season. He's only going to continue to get better from all of those. But we expect him to play at a, at a really high level uh, from the very beginning, and we need that from him. Okay, we'll go in the center aisle, straight down the aisle, right there in the center. Hey, Josh, Trey Wallace with OutKick. Uh, the relationship with Tony Vitello and how you've been able to use the baseball program to kind of cross-recruit with football, what has that been like for the last three years and how have you used Vitello uh, to maybe land a few players on y'all's roster? Uh, you know, at times there, there's baseball football guys that, uh, that you're recruiting, so having a, a clear dialogue with him I think is really important, him and his staff. But I think one of the great things, when it's going good, it's going good all year long as far as your logo being in front of, of recruits. And so what Coach Vitello has done on the baseball side of it or Coach Barnes has done on the basketball side of it, those are great experiences for recruits when they come to campus. Uh, they get a, a, a small taste of, of what Vol Nation is like and what game days are going to be like in front of 102,000 inside of Neyland Stadium. Okay, we'll go over to our right, Coach, on the near over to the right side. Hey, Coach, uh, Steve Moulton, WZZN out of Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, I, I did want to ask about building a program, and you've done it at a couple of places. That was Central Florida and now at Tennessee. With the portal and all the portal that entails, is it easier, harder to build a program how you'd like to? Well, I think you know, the, the portal um, has positives and negatives within your own roster, right? You, you lose some, you gain some. Uh, the portal gives you the ability to go patch holes on your roster quicker than it could happen just through general high school recruiting. Uh, it's a little bit like junior college recruiting used to be uh, where you had immediate needs and had to patch your roster. Going to the center aisle, about three quarters of the way back, right in front of the camera. 
Hey, Coach, Rick Butler with Rocky Top Insider. Can you just talk about the impact of your two new assistant coaches with Inge and uh, Sims heading into this fall, which is what they've been able to do in the spring and summer so far? Yeah, um, two guys that are elite teachers, um, that are relationship-driven, <clears throat> their ability to gain trust from the players inside of their position rooms as quickly as they did, uh, parlayed itself into uh, both of those position groups having great springs. And uh, they've had great summers too, but just the on-field experiences, you know, our linebackers, I thought, uh, played with great eyes, uh, alignment assignment, uh, their communication, their ability to destruct blocks. Uh, they were playing their best football as a group uh, that, uh, that they had since we've been there. And uh, Coach Sims has done an, an unbelievable job with the running back. Uh, it's a young group uh, outside of Dylan Sampson uh, that uh, have really grown in their understanding and their football IQ. Uh, really excited to see him continue to develop that group here as we get into training camp. Coach, we'll go into the section in front of my table on the far left aisle, three quarters of the way back. Yeah, Michael Cowell, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge. Uh, you just mentioned Dylan Sampson. What kind of role do you expect for him to have this year? Maybe an increase opportunities for him? Yeah, he will have uh, increased opportunities. Um, he's a guy from the moment that he got there, had great feel, pace, and vision. Uh, he's done a great job with the ball in his hands and out, out of his hands. Uh, he's become a really good pass protector. Uh, he's got the ability to help you in your return game as well. Um, after his freshman year, uh, his ability to impact his teammates uh, Dylan's one of the strongest leaders that we have inside of our, our locker room. Just a, a dynamic personality that uh, is, isn't afraid um, to, to call on his teammates and, and make sure that they're meeting the standards. He's uh, going to have a great year for us. We'll go back over to the left-hand side in the orange. Uh, hey, Coach. Uh, Bruce Marshall from WHPQ in Memphis. So schedule question for you. Two years ago, you had that game at Pitt that I really thought kick-started you guys early in the season. And, and last year, you didn't really have one of those away at the game in Nashville last year at the opener. But this year, you got that NC State game in Charlotte, the second game. How important is that for you to get a game like that, a tough non-conference game early? Do you think that can serve the same purpose as that Pitt game did two years ago? Yeah, every se season's different. Um, I'm not sure you want to necessarily go into overtime uh, to, to kickstart your season, uh, but uh, it certainly helped. Uh, NC State's a um, really good program. Uh, Coach Dorn's done a, done a, a really, really good job there. Uh, they're a really good football team. Uh, that'll be a, a big-time matchup uh, Saturday evening over there in, uh, in Charlotte. If you have a question, we have time for one or two more. You raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you. All the way up at the front. Guys, if we could get all the way up the front. Get one right in the front row. Hey, Josh, Tom Murphy, Arkansas Democrat. It's, had, it's been a few years since you've been to Fayette. Well, they're on the schedule this year. Just your thoughts about preparing for that game. Yeah, uh, always a great venue. Um, fan base is uh, extremely passionate and, um, you know, early. Uh, conference game on the road. Know that uh, that'll be a big test when we get to that Saturday. Go right behind the second row, Jen. Hey, Josh, Jenny Carl, someone with the on the box score. NIL become a bad word for a lot of college football fans. But can you talk a little bit about the positives for your guys? Just some of those personal stories that you've seen and the differences that it's made. Yeah, I wish I had it when I was uh, back in Oklahoma playing. You know what I mean? Um, I think, um, you know, for our players uh, in their lives, with their family, it's afforded them uh, opportunities. And um, um, I think uh, that's important. I, I, go, I do truly go back to my playing days and, and feel like, you know, you wanted to be a, a part of it and have an opportunity to, uh, to use the game in a positive way uh, for your family as well. And, and so... Uh, for our guys, uh, being able to increase their brand, um, their notoriety, and um, uh, also be take care, of, take care of their families is, uh, is a real positive. Okay, we'll take one final question over to our right, about three quarters of the way back. Yeah, Coach, uh, Ron Brown with SEC Sideline Sports Network in Memphis. The 
It's always darkest before dawn. We hear college football's ruining NIL, the portal, and everything. And here's Tennessee all of a sudden brought in 62 million in donations last year. Uh, it's pretty much idiot-proof college football. Uh, season ticket sales. What do you tell people that keep trying to kill the game? Uh, this is the great, greatest game. T to me, this is the greatest game that there is. Um, you look at... Um, the experience that young people have from 18 to 22, 23 years old, uh, their growth as a man, um, and, the, and the game affords that. Uh, you learn how to set goals, you learn how to handle success, you learn how to handle failure, uh, you learn how to lead, um, you learn how to get yourself ready to be the husband, uh, the father that you want to be when, uh, when football ends, and it ends for everybody someday. Um, there's a lot of obstacles within the landscape of college football in today's world that we got to navigate, but there's a lot of really smart people that can help us navigate it the right way. And uh, I'm excited about the future of football. Thanks. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.